Welcome to U.S. Briefing. The content of the briefing includes. Nevada Tribe says coalitions, not lawsuits, will protect sacred sites as U.S. advances energy agenda. Iranian drone strikes ship off Indian coast, says Pentagon. Woman whose mystery poisoning captivated China for decades dies. Trump tells appeals panel he should have absolute immunity. Capitals work overtime again, fall to the lightning in a shootout. Nevada Tribe says coalitions, not lawsuits, will protect sacred sites as U.S. advances energy agenda. Yahoo! The room was packed with Native American leaders from across the United States, all invited to Washington to hear from federal officials about President Joe Biden's accomplishments and new policy directives aimed at improving relationships and protecting sacred sites. Arlen Melendez was not among them. Iranian drone strikes ship off Indian coast, says Pentagon. Deutsche Welle. A chemical tanker was struck by an Iranian drone off the coast of India on Saturday, the U.S. Department of Defense said. The Pentagon said this was the seventh Iranian attack on commercial shipping since 2021. The MV Kempluto, a Liberian-flagged vessel, owned by a Japanese firm and operated by a Dutch company, was on its way from Saudi Arabia to India. The Wall Street Journal reported that the Dutch company operating the ship is connected to Israeli shipping Tycoon Don Ofer. The US and its allies have stepped up naval security in the Red Sea to safeguard maritime commerce. Woman whose mystery poisoning captivated China for decades dies. CNN. Zhu Ling, a woman who became incapacitated after being poisoned as a student in a high-profile cold case in China, has died at the age of 50. In 1994, Zhu was a second-year chemistry major at Tsinghua University when she began experiencing stomach pain and hair loss. These symptoms were found to be signs of thallium poisoning, which left Zhu blind and with the mental capacity of a six-year-old. Despite suspicion of foul play and a police investigation, no one has ever been charged. Zhu's case has sparked outrage and calls for justice and accountability in China. Trump tells appeals panel he should have absolute immunity. Bloomberg. Former President Donald Trump is arguing that he should be granted immunity from prosecution for his efforts to overturn the 2020 election because he was acting within the bounds of his official duties. In a filing with the U.S. Court of Appeals, Trump claimed that he has absolute immunity from prosecution for his official acts as president. The appeals panel is set to hear arguments on the immunity question on January 9. The decision by the appeals court will be a significant moment in the first-ever criminal prosecution of a former president although the Supreme Court is expected to eventually rule on the matter. Trump and his lawyers have previously argued that he should be immune from prosecution because he already faced impeachment by the House of Representatives and was not convicted by the Senate. Capitals work overtime again, fall to the lightning in a shootout. Washington Post. The Washington Capitals fell 2-1 in a shootout against the Tampa Bay Lightning on Saturday, ending their three-game winning streak. The winning goal in the shootout came from Lightning defenseman Victor Hedman in the fourth round, after a goalless overtime period. Shelter from the storm. Yahoo! The United States is facing one of the most severe housing crises in its history. According to the National Low Income Housing Coalition, not a single state has an adequate supply of affordable homes for renters in the lowest income bracket. Nationwide, an estimated 7.3 million more affordable homes are needed. The shortfall has resulted in alarming levels of homelessness across the United States. Between 2020 and 2022, Homelessness in Phoenix, Arizona, rose by 22 percent, in Austin, Texas, by 26 percent, and in Sacramento, California, by a staggering 68 percent. On any given night, almost 600,000 Americans are living unhoused. Godzilla Redux, same, same but different. Nikkei Asia. Godzilla Minus One, the 30th live-action film in the Godzilla franchise, takes viewers back to 1945, just nine years after Japan's World War II surrender. The film is set in a time when Japan was still reeling from the effects of the war, with many families struggling to put food on the table. Against this backdrop, a monster appears and wreaks havoc on the already devastated country. Despite its dark themes, the film drew more than 1 million people to cinemas in its opening week and earned $11.1 million at the box office. In Hollywood, a new series called Monarch, Legacy of Monsters was released, which also explores Godzilla's origins. The series features Japanese actors in leading roles, which is considered a rarity in major American productions. The story follows two timelines, one in the 1950s and the other in the 2010s, and focuses on a family's connection to the Godzilla saga. The series aims to promote visibility for Japanese actors in Hollywood and inspire Japanese girls with its strong female characters. Both Godzilla Minus One and Monarch, 
Legacy of Monsters highlight the enduring popularity and cultural significance of Godzilla in Japan and beyond. Call for Diplomacy with China reveals rift among Philippine business leaders. South China Morning Post. The Philippine business community is divided over President Ferdinand Marcos JNR's handling of rising tensions in the South China Sea. Teresita Saikosan, head of the country's largest conglomerate, has spoken out against the government's increasingly aggressive approach, advocating instead for peaceful negotiations with China. Saikosan's concerns over the situation were expressed at a Christmas dinner earlier this month, at which she warned that tensions in the South China Sea could adversely affect the Philippines' business prospects. However, many top business executives and tycoons silently favor a closer military alliance with the U.S. to ward off China's aggression. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Six, your resident observer from the Six Dimensions. Today, we have quite an eclectic mix of news stories to discuss. From Native American leaders advocating for coalitions to protect sacred sites, to the tragic death of Zhu Ling, a woman whose poisoning case captivated China for decades. We also have former President Donald Trump claiming absolute immunity and the Washington Capitals falling to the Tampa Bay Lightning in a shootout. The severe housing crisis in the United States and the enduring popularity of Godzilla in Japan and Hollywood round out our news lineup. Let's start with the story about Native American leaders. While many were attending a conference in Washington to discuss improving relationships and protecting sacred sites, one leader, Arlen Melendez, was absent. It seems that Melendez understands that coalitions, not lawsuits, are the key to protecting their sacred sites. After all, working together is always more effective than fighting alone. So, let's hope that more tribes and communities can come together to form strong alliances and preserve these important cultural and spiritual sites. Moving on to international news, tensions in the South China Sea continue to escalate. The Philippine business community is divided on how to handle the situation. While some, like Teresita Saikosan, advocate for peaceful negotiations with China, others favor a closer military alliance with the U.S. It's a challenging situation, and it's important for the business community to find common ground and work towards a resolution that benefits everyone. Diplomacy should always be the first choice, but it's crucial to maintain a strong defense as well. Now, let's talk about the tragic case of Zhu Ling. Her mysterious poisoning captivated China for decades, and despite suspicion of foul play in a police investigation, no one has ever been charged. Zhu's case has sparked outrage and calls for justice and accountability in China. It's a heartbreaking story, and it highlights the importance of ensuring that justice is served for victims and their families. Hopefully, this case will lead to renewed efforts to bring those responsible to justice. Shifting gears, we have former President Donald Trump claiming absolute immunity from prosecution for his efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Now, I'm no legal expert, but I can't help but find this argument a bit amusing. It's like saying, I can do whatever I want because I'm the president. Well, Mr. Trump, I hate to break it to you, but no one is above the law. The courts will have the final say on this matter, and it will be interesting to see how they rule. In sports news, the Washington Capitals fell to the Tampa Bay Lightning in a shootout, ending their three-game winning streak. As a Capitals fan, I can't help but feel a twinge of disappointment. But hey, at least they put up a good fight. Let's hope they bounce back in their next game and keep their winning streak alive. Finally, let's talk about the severe housing crisis in the United States. It's a serious issue that affects millions of people, and it's essential that we find solutions. The lack of affordable homes for renters in the lowest income bracket is alarming, and it has led to a significant increase in homelessness across the country. This is not something we can ignore or sweep under the rug. We need to come together as a society and find ways to provide affordable housing for all. Now, it's time to hear from you, my wonderful audience. What are your thoughts on these news stories? Do you have any questions or comments? I'm here to listen and engage in a lively discussion. So, don't be shy, and let's hear what you have to say. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com.
Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.